Yeah, that's all the screws from the base plate. They must be from the front cover, those other ones. That's good. Right, the leather edge. I've got to prepare that because I've got to scrape all this corrosion and rubbish off the back of that. And uh, I'll get that done. Okay, let me get some adhesive on this leather edge. That should be plenty and I'll spread that out, remove the excess. I was over generous with that lot obviously. Right, let's put that in place on the camera body. Just rub that excess off that's found its way to the front. Well that looks pretty good. I've got a tiny void right there which I'll fill once this is all dry. And there's a crack there I think which I might fill at the same time. But otherwise that looks good. bit loose on the surface there, just give that a wipe. That looks fine. Okay, so I can put my film advance lever back on there. Something's not moving right. It can't have been seated correctly. Now it's jamming, there's something wrong here. Okay, what have we got under here then? I think the release levers popped up out of place. Yes, it had. Yep, yeah, now we're good. Don't over tighten the screws on these plastic advance levers because uh, it's likely to end in tears. Let's see if I can clean this lever up slightly. 
to be a bit cautious about scraping at this because of course it's plastic it's not like scraping the uh, an aluminium advanced lever it's a bit crusty with that adhesive on there that looks a bit better Right, so the leatherette patch for that can go back in place, I think. Well, that's our leatherette patch back on there. And with that, I can put this back on, I think. As for the uh, film advance lever, don't over tighten those screws, you're only going through plastic, you don't want any unfortunate incidents. Okay, so that's the base of the camera closed back up, and we can deal with the front of the camera next. Of course, flipping that around, I've just dislodged this meter coupling. Let me get that cord run over its drums correctly. That's better. Okay, so far so good. While we were working, this piece of leatherette just started to flap in the breeze, so I'm going to take the opportunity to glue that back down while I've got it in front of me and before it gets damaged. Right, that's that. That'll save that piece getting damaged while working on something else. Okay, the front of the camera. Now getting the shutter back on here, this is where it gets entertaining. I've got to achieve a couple of things here. First, I might may need to adjust the meter. And you can adjust the meter to a certain extent with this screw right here. Basically, you are changing the amount that it moves the meter drum as the shutter moves, as the, the coil on the cam and the shutter moves. So we can certainly do that. Of course you've only got access to this when all this front stuff is off the camera. So in order to make that possible you have to have two goes at this, so I've got this ring off the front and basically what I'll do is I will put this thing in place on the body because it's got the guide hole for this shaft. So I'll put this in place there's a little spring goes behind that too of course fit the shutter, make my adjustments then take the shutter back off, put the shroud back on the front, put this back in place, put the shutter in place and everything will be good. I've got to make two adjustments as I said, I've got to make the adjustment for the meter if it needs adjusting at all, which I haven't determined. I've also got to set my infinity focus and there's no way, you can open the shutter on B, that's not a problem, but there is no way to open it on B 
at the aperture that you choose. The B setting there is right round at the F22 end of the scale. So that means that I need it full aperture when I'm setting the focus. So what I've got to do is block this lever at the back of the shutter so it's fully open, the aperture's fully open. Set the shutter speed to B, set my focus, put the front rings in place here, then remove the shutter in its entirety again so that I can remove whatever piece of junk I've put in here to hold that open for me while I'm testing it. Make sure that everything's ready and ready to go and then uh, close the camera up. So I'll do it in stages. I think it makes sense for me to do the focus first because that doesn't involve any soldering and then once I'm happy I've got my focus correct to cut to then solder my wires up for the meter and uh, make sure my meter coupling is appropriate then I don't think I can get the front on over the top of the shutter can I? No, you can't. So it means taking the shutter off completely, putting this front back on, and putting the shutter back, soldering the connections again, and making it go. So there's no way I can get out of soldering those connections twice if, if I'm going to check the function of the meter. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's tedious. I don't like these cameras. Before I put the shutter back on the camera so I can set the focus, first I need to set the shutter to the B position here. And that would normally give me an aperture of F22, which is useless for wanting to check the focus. What I need to do is put something in here to pull that lever across and hold it there. So I've got a piece of the uh, one of my cotton buds, my Q-tips, and I'll cut a bit off the shaft of that and see if I can jam that in there. Needs to be shorter than that. Oh yes, something like that will do the job. I'll just trim that a bit further. I think this must be some of the last of the uh, cotton buds that have the useful plastic Stems. Nowadays they just seem to have those useless paper stems, those cardboard stems which are absolutely crap when you're trying to work on anything at all. But I presume it stops baby seals stuffing them up their nose or whatever it is that they're desperate to guard against. We can get this in here. Yeah, just like that. Just like magic. Okay. So I've got that in place. That's holding the aperture fully open. My shutter is set at the B position. So that's good. So that means that if I put this onto the camera, I should be should be good. And that thing just popped out. Well, wouldn't it just Okay, let's get that back there.
I'll just give it a little bit of a talking to. Now I've got to get this retaining ring off without rotating everything else in sight. How have I done that up so tight? It was probably when I've been working on the shutter. Okay, let me loosen that off. Well here I am trying to fight the shutter back on. I was telling you all about it but unfortunately the camera wasn't watching so you didn't get to see that part. I'm just trying to get the cocking shaft connected at the moment. It's not wanting to drop in. Oh, the angle's not good. Let's try cocking the shutter and putting it on. That might be a useful trick. I've got a little tool here for cocking things like that. Shutter release up. Swing the film advance. Yes, that dropped in. Okay, so the shutter is mounted. The shutter release is correct. That, um, that went unusually smoothly. It's always suspicious when things like that happen. But right, I'll put my retaining ring in place. And the retaining rings on these don't seat down a long way. They're a little bit suspicious looking when you get them on because you don't get many turns. See if I can get it started. It feels good. I'll just check my shim, make sure that that's seated correctly. Yeah, the shutter is fixed back to its spot there. I'll tighten this up. I don't need to go mad tightening it up. Right, is it set? The shutter's set to be. It was here, there B. The aperture is fully open. I can now check my focus at the film plane, and that will allow me to assemble the stuff on the front of the shutter. And the shutter will be complete then, the focus will be correct. Then I can take this back off, connect up the meter circuit, uh, check the meter circuit make sure that the meter reads correctly and take it back off, put the shroud and everything around the front and close things up. Tedious I know, but fairly straightforward. Right, I've got that then sitting right at the point where an infinity target is in sharp focus at the film plane. I've put the focus uh, Scale ring in place, stopped at the infinity position, it's hard up against the infinity stop. 
I'll do up the three little grab screws that hold it there. Yeah, that feels solid. And I'll just check that to make sure that I haven't moved anything. No, that seems to be perfect. So that means I can put the focus scale ring back in place firmly. I can put the numbers ring back on here, which is held on with two small screws. And at this point, I know that I have my shutter complete, that the lens is focused correctly. And all is good with the world. See if I can get this scale ring back in place. So it's a bit reluctant to fall into place. That's better. Oops, that screwdriver's giving me grief. Yeah. Okay. Something's rubbing on it's rubbing on something there. Let's get that off. And I can see what too. Managed to get that on the outside of my depth of field pointers. That'll be why it was a bit stiff. It looks a bit neater and what do you know the focus is nice and smooth too okay so that part's done I'm wondering whether I can kill two birds with one stone and connect my meter from here I can't really get into that space with a uh, soldering iron so I'm not going to attempt that I'll just remove my retaining ring, which is snug, but not so snug that I can't move it. Now, yeah, speaking of that shim, there was a shim in here between the shutter and the mount at this point. Now, if for some reason you neglected to put that back, perhaps because it was awkward to put there, that would certainly 
affect your meter accuracy because this pin here follows the cam inside the shutter. Anything that changed the distance between the shutter and that pin would change the, amount, the distance that that pin moved and therefore your meter reading would be incorrect. So it's absolutely essential that the shims that come out that they go back. Okay, well I'll pull that wire through now and connect that lot up I think. There's a little bit of slack in that wire which is good and then I can pull it back into position once I've got it soldered in place. They go on these connections here one of those is earth, the other one is not. So I've got to make sure that I get the correct wire connected to the correct terminal here. Because if I get it back to front, the meter never works. Guess how I know that. Well, after a few rude words were spoken and things were done and wires were soldered and they broke and had to be soldered back again, I've got that back together. So that shutters back in there, the wires are coupled to the meter and if you look closely you can see the pin here moves in and out as I turn the dial and that in turn moves this lever here on the meter. Here is my adjustment screw for the meter, now all I've got to do is set this to an appropriate film speed I know where the sunny setting is. I know right here in this mark what I want that exposure to be. And I can check on my uh, light source and make sure that I've got everything correct. So first I'll set this to the film speed I want. And I'll check that when I set this, I'll check my shutter speed here. I'm pretty sure I know what the aperture is at that point. And then I'll check that the meter delivers the needle in the middle of the marks at the top there. And if it doesn't, I'll make this adjustment at this point. Sounds easy. Well, as luck would have it, I don't need to make any adjustments. That meter reads correctly when I center the needle up in the marks in the finder. And I check my shutter speed and my aperture as set by the camera for that uh, light level. Everything looks good. That's a little bit unexpected, but um, it's welcome all the same. So now I can take my shutter back off, unsolder the wire, put the cover plate back around the front here, resolder the wire, put the shutter back in place, and it'll be done. Well, I'll better get this front of the camera back in some semblance of order. The worst part of this job is going to be getting the three wires soldered back into position. Because we have the flash wire and the two wires for the meter. Why is nothing sitting down? Yush. Be that wire, is it? That wire is trapped underneath something. Hmm. 
Okay. There's a piece of tape or something here for that to guide that wire down that channel. And that was hanging up, I believe. Now while I've got this here, I'll put a wipe of molybdenum paste through where that pin runs. That flash wire needs to come up through that slot. Oh yeah, it's all seated. Get these three screws fitted. So in this case, I was exceptionally lucky. The meter needed no adjustment. I could have avoided all of that hassle of um, soldering it, testing the meter, putting it back, if I'd been confident the meter worked correctly to start off with. Of course, there was no way that I could have been confident of that. That was complete unknown. So I've got my three wires to get connected back up here. Now one of those is pretty fragile, I'd say that's probably going to snap on me. I'm going to have to cut that back a bit, I think. Now the, these wires here, these two ones for the meter, one of them is sort of green coloured, the other one is sort of gold coloured. Now the one that's gold coloured goes to the insulated terminal on the shutter. The one that's green coloured goes to this side, which is basically the earth side of that. Our flash wire here gets soldered to the flash contact on the shutter here. Okay. Alright. Well, this is um, just going to be 10 minutes of fighting and swearing really, trying to get these three wires soldered together and getting the shutter back on the camera without one of these tiny wires deciding it's tired of that game and snapping in half. Um, I've been here before. It's alive. The meter works. The flash works. The shutter cocks and fires. So we're into the final stages of this now and one of the things I always check is what the frame counter does and the frame counter is not working properly. Sometimes it moves, if you move it to some positions you'll find it goes. I think it's that the plastic wheel underneath it's probably stripped. That moved, that moved, that didn't move. So I'm thinking that the wheel under here is stripped. So I've got to deal with that and hopefully that'll be the last problem of this camera. Have the top cover off, trying not to disturb anything and I'll have a look at this frame counter. And I can see that that's just skipping over the top there. So I think that plastic wheel has just come to the end of its natural life. Which is a problem because I'm not sure what I've got as a replacement. I'm sure I'll be able to find something to uh, pillage. Basically, this spring just gets pushed forward one position each time. So 
So what I'm looking at is these ratchet teeth here. And they are pretty worn. They're not exactly non-existent. But clearly that uh, is not shifting them very well. I'll have to see if I've got a dial. This container looks promising. Let's see what we've got in here. What we want is one that looks new and unmolested, like this one. Sometimes it's useful having a stack of uh, old parts. Right, so I'll have a close look at this. There's a bit of, there, there may be some wear on the tip of that thing. I've got to be sure that that's not going to be a problem. And I'll clean this because we need to make sure that the problem isn't that the uh, dial is too stiff to rotate. In other words, that the little metal ratchet here has got to work too hard to shift it which inevitably means that this will be pushing into the plastic instead of pushing the plastic around which is what we need it to do. So I'll just clean these components up and put this together. Well that's it with this camera. It's all nice and tidy now. All going. I'm sure the RetNet 2A is not exactly Kodak's um, finest moment but uh, this one goes well. I think it'll be quite nice to have it back in service and I'm sure that the owner will be pleased to see it coming home. So thanks for watching. Um, I don't expect floods of these cameras to be coming this way.